this is uh, Anabaptist Perspectives. I'm Steve Russell. I teach at Faith Builders, and I'm talking to my friend Kyle here, Kyle Stolzfus, who also teaches at Faith Builders and is the academic dean there. We want to continue the discussion we were having on um, our heritage. Kyle, what uh, do you want to say about our cultural heritage, mm -hmm. and uh, what about it excites you? Mm -hmm. I, I think I'd, I'd like to say, just to begin and say, it, we, we all have one, okay? <laughs> we, all have a, we all have a cultural heritage. Uh -huh. And then I'll, I'll zoom in and say that um, for us as Christians, we too have a heritage, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's a lot of different places we can come from, and I'm sure for folks watching here, um, Different backgrounds you're going to have, so I'm making us some assumptions here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But uh, to be a, to be a Christian and to have a heritage is is to have a heritage of you'd say texts, scripture. Mm -hmm. Becoming a Christian is to mm -hmm. is to know the place that the Bible and scripture have in our lives, and the, then there's the important documents that your own church and mm -hmm. your heritage has. Mm -hmm. um, the cultural heritage, it's it's things like the, the, the practices in the rules that we have, which mm -hmm. kind of guard where we're going, but also orient us in certain ways. And these mm -hmm. are important. Mm -hmm. uh, there's heroes and authorities. And some of these heroes that we have, they're really remarkable. You know, there's, there's the monuments that we erect sometimes around certain heroes, but many of them are actually very everyday. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my, my dad is something of a hero in the Christian faith for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm blessed because of that. Mm -hmm. This doesn't mean he's a monument mm -hmm. that, that, that we've got to erect something around, but that's significant for me. Mm -hmm. um, there's the, the stories that we tell about our, our own heritage, uh, the stories that we tell to others that are important to us. Um, I, I find it interesting that um, in the Old Testament, when God really wants to emphasize who he is, and who the people of God are, he just reminds them to tell their children the stories. Mm -hmm. Tell them the stories of, of who God is, the kinds of work that he does for his people. And, that, and that, that's really significant in who those children become, mm -hmm. to tell the stories. That's part of our heritage. There's the beliefs, there's the commitments, there's the places that are distinctly ours and that we remember. It's, it's this wealth that we have of heritage, of, of resources, of these common pathways we have, the communal goals that we have that deeply shape who we are. Um, sometimes we look at all of these things and uh, we call them baggage, mm -hmm. right? And they're, mm -hmm. When they're not working quite as well as, they, as we'd like, um, sometimes it's easier to recognize these things as a gift. But I think what, what, what I'm saying is just that our heritage, it's, it's what gives us our way of being in the world. Mm -hmm. And to have a Christian heritage is to have this way of being in the world that's here with Jesus. Mm -hmm. he's, he's here among us, and, and the heritage we have is something that reminds us of that as a community of believers. And I, I think, I think that maybe one of the most important insights here is that when we have a heritage, in, in an important sense, we, we receive it as, as something that's given to us, mm -hmm. as a gift. Mm -hmm. And we have to decide what to do with that. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I want to ask you about that, but before I do, uh, I hear an implication, uh, or maybe I'm, I'm misunderstanding, that uh, there are, there's more than one Christian heritage. That, that uh, mm -hmm. if I happen to live in Africa and just happen to be Ethiopian, then my heritage can be, well, it can be Christian, but it will be different than an Anabaptist or a European uh, uh, so, do you have anything to say about that? You're, you're not saying there's just one Christian heritage, I think. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to say about that aspect, that, that um, in different places it may look somewhat different? Mm -hmm. uh, that, that is an important, it's an important observation. It's also a difficult one. Mm -hmm. um, there is a certain boundedness to what we could consider, I think, Christian heritage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we have to take that kind of as our starting place, I think. Yeah. But I, I agree that within that, uh, human culture is really widely varied. Mm -hmm. And 
there's going to be different expressions mm -hmm. of a Christian heritage that's mm -hmm. suited to each one of those cultures. Mm -hmm. um, it's not all exactly cookie cutter the same. Yes. Now, I, I think yeah. certain folks, you, know, you could be more or less tolerant of how much variety there is, and I'd be very careful to say that just to say that there's some variety of expression isn't the same thing as saying that we just get to make it up or, or that, that or that it's all equally okay. yeah yeah or that it's all just equally yeah. the same yeah um so i'd be cautious yeah well in the previous uh, discussion we talked about uh, how the anabaptists uh held the wonderful gifts that god had given them in this wonderful world uh with open hands uh -huh. and um so i would imagine that there could be cultures that hadn't heard of christ but that lived communally okay and that uh -huh. they would definitely uh, express that more more communally than even than we do hmm. you know I, I would give that as a, a possible so that so that let's say if there were um, an African or an Asian culture that was very communal and they became Christians I could easily imagine them uh, being more Hutterite than the Hutterites you know <laughs> and and yet so that would yeah. be their cultural expression it's uh, it's within the bounds uh -huh. but it's different than what we would do and that wouldn't be at all offensive or no. strange no, for them no. they'd, they'd see it and they'd, they'd they'd recognize the pattern and like, well, this is actually, mm -hmm. this is somewhat who we are. So, you know, give praise to God for that. Um, they've, they fit the pattern. Maybe some other areas that would be more difficult for them mm -hmm. too. Yes. Uh, which communal cultures do have some other struggles many times. Yes. Uh -huh. right. yeah. I might just say yet, I think that, you know, I'm starting with the assumption that we have some heritage here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't have to have that assumption. That's the assumption that I'm having. We have a heritage and because we have a heritage, um, what, what I'm going to be what I'm going to be suggesting is that, and this is I think something I'm realizing the more I the, the older I get, is that to have a heritage at all, and to actually grow in heritage, is in a lot of ways to, to also grow in our appreciation of the whole package mm -hmm. of what it means to have mm -hmm. a heritage. Mm -hmm. There's some parts of who we are and what our past is that we do not like. Mm -hmm. and that we rightfully ought not to like. They're disappointing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's, there's even violence in, thing, in our past that happens to us or the people that we love. Mm -hmm. These are part of our heritage mm -hmm. too, right? Mm -hmm. Not just the good stuff. And it's also not the really extraordinary things. Many times we can get so focused on certain mm -hmm. really monumental figures that, that we can obscure and forget the everyday work that God calls us to and value and esteem that for what it is. Mm -hmm. um, so when I talk about heritage, I'm, I'm talking about all of it. Yes. Not just, not just the towering monuments that what tends to happen if we chase too hard after them is we, we make them look like us. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and not just the really heroic things, but, but also the everyday mm -hmm. and, and also the things that we don't like. Mm -hmm. And when God gets a hold of us, when he, when he calls us into our heritage and when we appreciate it, I think he actually helps us to do that more. Well, this, uh, you're, you're, you're recognizing there are good aspects very positive aspects and aspects that we rightfully um, chafe under. Yeah, yeah. So what uh, do you have any uh, concrete con uh, ways to think about what to do maybe to avoid idol uh, idolizing the, the really good and uh, but maybe even more so how to deal with those parts that chafe that we chafe under. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do we respond to our, uh, how do we faithfully and fruitfully respond to our, uh -huh. our um, we're going to have the heritage, I agree with you. Uh, it's got some really good parts, some really bad parts. Uh, we could idolize or we could uh, maybe even reject everything because of mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. So what, any, any concrete ideas there to help us? I'll try to get concrete. Yeah. I'll try to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, but I think you've already begun to answer the question that, that you're, you're posing. You know, how can we avoid idolizing it? Uh -huh. But how do you avoid just rejecting it outright? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, maybe we'll get concrete here as we go. Um, and again, we're, we're, we're jumping right over some of these questions, I think, that, that can be interesting questions sometimes, but I'm just not sure how helpful they are if we all have a heritage. You know, questions like... Um, are we going to have? Are we going to follow Jesus, or are we going to follow heritage? Well, that's an interesting question, but I don't know if they're they're really incompatible like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. 
questions which can become more personal to decide when uh, uh, whether we can actually commit ourselves to a certain heritage, mm -hmm. say, that's, that's mm -hmm. feeling kind of stale, mm -hmm. um, that seems obsessed with certain boundaries or rituals or something like that. These are really hard questions mm -hmm. to answer. Mm -hmm. And unless I'm actually talking to somebody, it's hard yeah. for us to really staple that down. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some of those questions in the closet and just put out two basic possibilities here and then offer a third one. All right. Um, and and the, the first possibility, well, the first two possibilities are two ways to reject heritage, okay? okay? Um, I think this, the second way of rejection is the one that tends to get the more attention, but, uh, but either one of these first two ways is still a rejection nonetheless. Um, and, and the first way of rejecting a heritage is just what I'll call indulgent indifference. Mm -hmm. Okay, you receive a certain heritage, you're born into it, you enter it. Um, we might wring our hands from time to time about the things that are wrong with it, but ultimately we just begin to enjoy the good things about the heritage for our own sake, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, we enjoy our ability, say, in, in the conservative traditions, we enjoy our ability to work hard, to make money, and surround ourselves with beautiful things and accumulate them endlessly. There's so many things we can get these days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we could enjoy the friendships, the meaning that we've come by that's been given to us. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not saying that these things are, are necessarily bad mm -hmm. in and of themselves. It, it's just that if, if this is all it means, mm -hmm. we've rejected the heritage, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. We've rejected a heritage particularly if that heritage includes things like mutual sharing, like you've talked mm -hmm. about, this way of sharing our goods freely with mm -hmm. both within the community of faith, but also outside. Mm -hmm. We've rejected a heritage that talks about things like cross-bearing, mm -hmm. okay, about self-denial and selfless love. Mm -hmm. we, we just can't forget, I think, that those who save their lives will lose them. And, and even if we do feel shame, for being indulgently indifferent from time to time. Shame can help us kind of feel better about ourselves mm. in a strange way, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really get us past mm -hmm. the reality of this first option of rejecting a heritage which is just indulging indifference. Uh, th these aren't easy things to say, right? Mm -hmm. But I think, mm -hmm. I think that's true. That's mm -hmm. the first way to reject a heritage, mm -hmm. become indulgent and indifferent to it. And it doesn't even look like it sometimes from what you said. Not really, you, no. You're just kind of sliding along yeah and not really engaging with the deep part of it yeah 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 you're not uh, you're not you're not investing in it in real yeah. any meaningful way or continuing it yeah. um, the second one the second possibility and this is the one I think that tends to get get the most airtime is, is just to respond critically mm -hmm. and probably walk away mm -hmm. from a certain heritage mm -hmm. um, I think one of the more popular ways to reject a heritage these days is to uh, is to hate religion and love Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Like you just get rid of all these tottering, nasty things that are really inconvenient. Not even sure sometimes how good they're doing for us in our walk with Jesus. So just just love Jesus, and we we'll just get rid of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, get rid of the whatever it is we don't like: the rituals, the behaviors, the dress, uh, the emphasis on guilt. Whatever it is that makes us mad or uncomfortable or just inconvenient, uh, we can kind of sweep that away. The, the difficulty I, I just have here is, is that um, hating religion and following Jesus, well, that's, that is a tradition in and of itself. And it's one with a real heritage of weakness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you can't, just by rejecting one tradition, somehow escape tradition entirely. All we can mm -hmm. really do is move from one mm -hmm. tradition to another one. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's some response critically there to the second option, which is to try to respond critically and, and in a lot of ways get away from tradition entirely. And I'm saying, well, that's a tradition too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can't really do that. Mm -hmm. So what I, I think I'll, I'll suggest is, is that um, we have a third option, which is to 
follow Jesus in, in, in building and constructing diligently, you could say like a house, a body that's actually, that's actually worthy of him. Mm -hmm. um, we don't squander the gifts of our heritage by living indulgently, mm -hmm. but we don't just abandon them mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it looks, it, looks something, it looks something like this, and this is the third option, is that we do run light, okay? We, do, we, don't, we don't run or fight uncertainly like one who, who beats the air, and that means that we're, we're getting rid of the stuff mm -hmm. that's accumulated on us and our encumbrances, including the encumbrance of reaction. Mm -hmm. and including the encumbrance of just indifference. These two get in our way of following Jesus. And instead of um, responding indulgently or, or, or reactionary, we follow him. Okay? We, we discern his form with the Holy Spirit wherever we are in our heritage, and we give our energy to following and to building constructively after him. Um, there's a chance that as we follow Christ, we might have the opportunity, like Paul says, to, to complete Christ's sufferings mm -hmm. on his behalf. Mm -hmm. The cross is something we bear outside, but it's also something that we have to sometimes bear inside the community. That can get kind of hard sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But, but we, we build on heritage not because, uh, not because what we've been given is perfect, mm -hmm. but because it's, it's good. <laughs> it's, it's got something already intact for us there. It's got gifts that God has invested into it. And the, the practices, the commitments, the heroes that, that we've come into, um, these, these kinds of things take a very long time mm -hmm. to, to, to accumulate. And, and many times when people try to just start over again, many times that fails. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work well, or, or many times when people try that, it ends up just looking like themselves. Mm -hmm. So I'm suggesting, I think, that instead of just discarding all of these things, we actually find ways to commit ourselves to them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that comes at a personal cost, mm -hmm. and to build faithfully on what it is that Christ invests into the heritage that's distinctly our own, mm -hmm. whatever that heritage might be. So this commitment you're talking about yeah. avoids the indifference, which might look good, I mean, the way you described it. I mean, indifference itself doesn't sound good, but yeah. the way you described it, oh, I'm just kind of skating along and nobody notices. Uh -huh. that, but so to avoid the indifference and to really get to the heart of the thing, also to avoid reaction, because there, is, there are problems. Yeah. And so the commitment is really what we need. Okay, well, I appreciate what you've said, uh, Kyle. Uh, what do you have to say about... Um, our attitudes towards what we've been mm. given. Mm -hmm. Well, these, these, these require, I think, a lot of practice to, to grow, but the attitudes we come to is we try to build constructively on the heritage that we're given through Christ. Uh, they're really significant, okay? Our, our approach to our heritage really shows through. I, I, and I think I'll tell just a little bit of a story here. Um, it was... Uh, Oh, it's been a number of years ago, I think right over Valentine's Day, that Marlene, my wife, was sick with a stomach bug, and instead of pestering her to make us some food, I just was like, well, we've got to take our two oldest children, we're just going to go to town and we're going to get some food out there. Um, my oldest child, she picked out Wendy's, just because we hadn't been to Wendy's for a long time. I was like, well, okay, one fast food place is just about like any other one. Mm -hmm. We go to Wendy's, uh, we order our food, and in my mind, we're just enjoying, you know, a good civilized meal with my children here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't realize it, but we were being watched, okay? Mm -hmm. First by the, the hostess who had greeted us and gotten our food for us, uh, Arcella, um, with her name. First by her, and then the, there's the people around us. And as we're, we're wrapping up our meal, we're just enjoying each other. Um, 
I'm enjoying my children, they're being respectful, they're asking for things like with words like please and thank you and mm. all of that. And Arsala comes out and she's got two of these uh, Frosties that they have there. <laughs> she bought these things, she bought two Frosties for my children mm -hmm. um, just as a way I think of recognizing them and appreciating who they were mm -hmm. as children and and, and just helping us to kind of have the good time that we are already having, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, that was that was interesting enough. We, we, we picked up and we're leaving and there's this elderly couple um, just off to the side of us. And as we walk by, uh, they, they stop us and um, they say something, I forget exactly what it was. They just, just remark about how lovely and well-behaved and well-mannered my children are. And uh, there's this parting comment, and here's, here's what needs to stick, I think. <laughs> this parting comment that they gave to me that was, honestly, it was very confusing <laughs> because this parting comment, they say, the, you must be doing a great job of raising your children. Okay? That's how they made sense of that. And, and I, I guess it was true, but, but really, you know, I, I'm doing a great job of raising my children. They give me the credit for that. And, and this is this is where I'm going is that I can't take the credit for that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that that hostess, Arcella, was, was kind of special in noticing us. That elderly couple was very kind in, in saying the things that they said. But, and yeah, it's true. We do try to do a good job of raising our children. We try our best. We fail frequently. We make mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, we keep on trying. But I haven't read many parenting books, uh -huh. okay? Yeah. And I've, I've come to the forms of being a parent that I have, mm -hmm. not by some kind of self-formed thing that I can congratulate myself mm -hmm. for, but, but through heritage. Mm -hmm. It's because of what my parents have showed me mm -hmm. in their own fallible way mm -hmm. and as broken creatures tend to do mm -hmm. they did their best mm -hmm. and i'm surrounded by a community of people that by and large we tend to try to do our best mm -hmm. and it has tangible effects on us mm -hmm. but i can't take credit for that mm -hmm. um so that's that's an attitude i think that i need to remind myself of frequently and it's just this this is a gift a so, heritage is a so gift. it's gratitude for yes. the forms that you have been given. Yes, that's right, mm -hmm. and, and uh, that's that's just a powerful antidote in my mind against some mm -hmm. kind of idolatry, mm -hmm. where you could set it up as being the thing mm -hmm. in of itself. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's good, but it's a gift. Mm -hmm. It's grace, mm -hmm. and it's just filled with grace. Mm -hmm. Maybe another attitude that I'll just throw out is I think the the attitude of humility. Okay, where when we take on ourselves humility and cultivate it, we can give up on this, this terrible burden of being the self-made person, right? Um, you can give up on the lie, I think, in humility that, that freedom is just going where we want to go, it's doing what we want to do, mm -hmm. and of just accumulating resources to do mm -hmm. more and more things, and we mm -hmm. say that's what freedom is like. Humility takes us a different direction. Mm -hmm. It allows us to actually admire heroes for who they are and try to cultivate the mm -hmm. kind of personality that they are. It allows us to submit ourselves to authorities mm -hmm. that are actually put there both for our guidance but also I think to to show us the ways that are actually going to cultivate us as people. This is very hard to do mm -hmm. and it requires humility to do that. Mm -hmm. But maybe see it as a cost maybe of joining ourselves to a heritage but in the end Humility is what gives us the freedom that we really need to perform as the kinds of people we really want to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it allows us to live into a legacy that's larger than we are mm -hmm. as individuals. So, two attitudes: anyway, gratefulness and humility, somewhere toward the middle, I think. Very good. And uh, you had mentioned some questions. Did you have mm. uh, some questions you wanted to bring up? Uh, well, maybe. I'd I'll just wrap it up with yeah, yeah these, these three qu questions as a way of making application. Um, and the questions deal with who we are, it deals with where we're going, mm -hmm. and, and how we're getting there. Okay. And what I'm saying in this talk is, is basically this. When we ask the question who we are, 
what I'm saying is you are not your own. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're not our own. And so much of our story has been told as Christians before we're born. Mm -hmm. Part of living into a heritage is acknowledging that. We are not our own. Mm -hmm. uh, the second question that I'll ask and, and respond to is, well, where, where are you going? And, and what I'm saying is that uh, we're, we're going as Christians to build Christ's kingdom. Mm -hmm. And that has a form to it. And that's the form of service and, mm -hmm. and humility. Uh, the third question is, well, how are we going to get there? And I'm suggesting that when we build with heritage, we recognize the tools that we've been handed. We learn to exercise ourselves and apply ourselves to the tools that we actually have in our hands. And we also, at the same time, we're, we're developing the tools that we have and, and making them maybe just a little sharper, a little bit better mm -hmm. than they were than we got them. Because sometimes they're a little bit rusty too. Mm -hmm. and, and it's okay, I think, to say that. But we use those tools and we use them to actually build something constructive. Well, thank you. With these last uh, questions and with your um, pointing us to commitment, it seems to me that you're um, saying something very Anabaptist. You, we need to make a decision. Mm. We've been given this heritage. What are we going to do with it? Mm. And let's. Uh, and, and I think uh, the healthiest thing is to make a clear-cut decision. Mm. I'm going to take part in it or I'm not. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to be thankful and I'm going to be humble. And hopefully if I go elsewhere, I'll do the same thing. Which in some ways, isn't, doesn't it just point to baptism, though? You know, yes. It's, we <laughs> enter by death. Yes. And yes. we give ourselves to it. It's yeah. not always... Um, it's not always as wonderful as we might hope. But, but it does open a door That's right. to eventually the resurrection. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for this, and uh, we'll close on, on that note. Thank resurrection. you. Resurrection. Yeah. <laughs>